welcome back. Well, this morning we have U.S. Senator with us, uh, Bill Cassidy, here with us, representing uh, Louisiana. Thanks so much for being back with us. Hey, thanks for having me. We have a, a lot we could talk about, but I think one of the things that's making news and one of the reasons that you were in town is focusing on opioids and the addiction and the treatment of it. Tell us a little bit about what you what you did yesterday and how that's kind of affecting what y'all will be doing. Yeah, I went to CADA, which is a drug and addiction, uh, alcohol and uh, drug addiction treatment center, and there was an incredibly moving story by a woman mm -hmm. whose mother was an addict and she said she was born into addiction. Wow. She had her first drink of alcohol at age nine, used amphetamines at age 12, and she just felt despairing about her life. Uh, and, and at some point she had a child and that moved her to do something different. Right. She entered Kata and then became, it went into recovery. And right. she's been in recovery since. Wow. And she sits there, she's a beautiful young lady, and she gives this incredibly compelling story. And you say, oh my gosh, if she had not been treated, she would be broken home, kid in foster care, maybe right. dead. And instead, she's this person who's reaching out to others with addiction, trying to bring them, give them the hope and courage to go into a program such as this. Just a great story. And I was gonna say, opioids is something, and in Louisiana, we have a high rate of deaths of opioids, of addiction, and, and a lot of those sort of statistics. In the treatment process of this, you know, how do centers like that play into it? And as, you know, as a legislator, you know, what do you look at for things like that? So, uh, as a legislator, you want to get more money to these folks because these folks are the ones making the difference. It, you, the federal government can give as much money to the state and local governments as possible. Unless there's local leadership, nothing good happens. Here we saw a great example of mm -hmm. local leadership. By the way, let me give a shout out. Sheriff Whittington is working with the Department of Corrections mm -hmm. so that if someone's arrested for a crime related to drugs, if it is just kind of a person who probably is not a hardened criminal, they put him this way. Hardened criminal, they put him in another way. Right. They don't mix the two. And a great program to take that person who might end up going to jail, instead diverting them into treatment, hopefully again saving a life. Yeah. Uh, saving taxpayers lots of money. Right. Tremendous Absolutely. program. And and uh, something else I wanted to talk about, what we have just a, about a minute or so, is something you're working on in health care. This is something everybody is kind of thinking about, we're talking about, worrying about. But health care transparency is something that you guys are talking about and working on. What is that? Lauren, have you ever gotten an x-ray or a blood test, gotten a bill six weeks later and goes, oh my gosh, yes. look how much that costs? Yes. Why couldn't you know right at the point? The doctor orders a blood test, you scan a barcode, you say, hmm, I can get it for $300 here, $34 there. Right. Right. That's where I'm going. Exactly. We're trying to put in a mechanism where the mama, getting her daughter's CT scan, can scan that barcode, knows where to go. It's important. A lot of the Obamacare policies have $6,000 deductibles. You're effectively paying cash. Right. Let's give you the best value for your cash. We think that begins to lower health care costs dramatically by giving the patient the power of price. Absolutely, and definitely something so important to keep in mind. Senator Cassie, thank you so much for stopping thank by with us this morning.